Welcome back to Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. And today we've got a little special for you. It's going to be both Akio and I uh, working on uh, one of Akio's designs together. She's going to show you how to do a halo ring. So I'm going to pass it over to Akio and she'll explain you what a halo ring is. Okay, Ava. Hi everyone. So today I'm showing you uh, how to model uh, the hero ring in the Rhino 7. So the hero ring is, uh, as you know, that the, uh, there is a center stone surrounded by the small stones. Yes. So hero ring is named by uh, this way because I think it looks like a, a angel hero. And it's been around uh, for a long time, since like, a, I, I guess, 1920s and 30s. So it's a timeless uh, design. So, um, yeah, so you can do a center stone diamond uh, surrounded by the colored stone or vice versa. You have the, maybe like a, um, the sapphire on the center and diamond around it. So uh, it's very fun, um, uh, fun ring. It's a beautiful ring. Okay. Actually, very common with rubies or with sapphires, eh? The two two color, those two colors you find pretty often in antiquity. The diamonds exactly. and rubies, diamonds and sapphires. Yeah, Edwardian, yes, exactly. Yeah, I love the combination of that. Yeah. All yeah. right. So let's get started then. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's start the hero ring. So we will create the, uh, the ring size. So go to the curve layer. So ring is sitting up. So I will make a circle in a front viewport. The circle command. Center circle zero size six uh, in a US size, which is a 16 millimeter, 1651. Okay. Then I will create the line from here, maybe two millimeters. That's where the diamond is, the center stone is going to be sitting. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we will import the uh, center stone. So this center stone, I will use a block instance. Uh, I have a file, so let me show you. So I will go to the file and I will import my block instance file. What is the advantage of using the block instance, uh, Akio? Because I know that I, I use Grasshopper Gold, for example, but I think that, that there are a lot of advantages to having your own block instance library, probably. Yes, exactly. So you can easily, you know, uh, it's in a, uh, the, so for example, like this one, uh, I have like a dozens of stone uh, imported in a file, so you can, uh, uh, easily, you know, switch back and forth the stones, and also you can edit uh, the blocks very easily. Yeah. So, which is uh, you can add the object. So you have, if you have a, a for example, uh, well, I will show it later. Um, the small diamond in on the hero. So if you wanted to change the size of the uh, the prongs, or if you wanted to switch the cutter. So yeah. instead of deleting everything and then um, the arraying the, the stone, you will, uh, it's called a, a, I think it's called a switch the block. So this is a, actually the block uh, tuba flyout. The yeah. replace block, so we can replace it. So instead of um, uh, editing the whole thing, where we're doing the whole thing, we can just, uh, you know, s instantly uh, swap the object so oh, it's really easily done okay yeah okay so um the broke instance gemstone file uh which i'm going to put in the description below uh i will go to the file import and 
CSGO gemstone block instance file. Okay, okay. so oh, this, I already have this in uh, uh, my, but you can, oh, what happened? Please. Okay, so, um, yes, so it's imported, but you don't see anything, but it lives on this file. So in this block, um, so I created the file for this defined block. Uh, I would actually talk about more about the block uh, specific in another video. So this case, we will insert, insert block. When I click the insert, so I have all kinds of stone right here. Okay. So I will come to the round. And uh, I wanted to use a, a carat and half uh, diamond, so which is a, a seven point uh, seven point four millimeter. Yes. So I will scale it seven point four. Here we go, and then it will ask you insertion point. So I will snap to. Oops, my project is on. So. Release the project and then I will snap to right here. Here Super. we go. All right. That is the, the convenience of having the line. The two yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now let's see. Uh, now we're going to create a hero. So go to the front viewport. All right. So I would zoom in. So change the layer to hero. So I created this layer previously. So this curve layer. So I always uh, separate, you know, the metal layer, curve layer, so that you uh, better organize, so that you can, you know, on and off the layer uh, without, you know, looking for the uh, object. Yeah, working in clean in a clean file and in a well organized file helps a heck load. Oh yeah, it's a save a lot of time. Yeah, it's um, sounds kind of annoying in the beginning, but uh, uh, it's going to be a part of your workflow to create the, all the, uh, the layers. Very important. Mm. Okay, so what I would do is I wanted to make the line from here. So actually, I'm gonna like that. And then I will offset this uh, pavilion um, to uh, 0 0.2 millimeter, actually. So here, 0.2, and this one, maybe 0 0.2. Yeah, oh. so you wanted to have the uh, the hero up over here. So you wanted to see the, um, so it's the hero is going to be, no, that's the stone is going to be stone is going to be a little bit above the yeah. hero. Yes, so you can see the um, the crown better. So I offset it zero point two millimeter, and then I will create a line like this, and then I will offset again this one one point nine millimeter. One point, yeah. So we will be using a one point five millimeter uh, stone. So you need a zero point two millimeter space uh, mm. to the other side of it. Exactly. Okay. So uh, the next is I'm going to make uh, the circle. It's called circle tangent to three curves. So first curve second curve and a third curve. Here we go. Okay, so now, oops, now I delete this curve. So I wanted to create this shape. Yes, so I wanted to, so you can, um, you can use a trim command. Yeah. Uh, my favorite tool is it's called a uh, curve boolean. Curve boolean. I so said I don't use very often, but I um yeah I'm it must be very useful, especially in graphics programs like Illustrator. But for some reason, I just never think of using it in Rhino. 
Yeah, this is an amazing tool. Uh, so curve boolean delete input all. So that's what we're going to be using, which is a right click on this. So yes. as this toolbar shows, what what's going to do is see you have a, a multiple curves, and the result will be result will be um, you know the joining the outlines and deleting the middle curves. Yeah, it's instantly. <laughs> okay, so right click on this. So let's select the curve. So I will select those curves, enter, and then you just click outside of it. Then enter. Look. That's clean. That's nice. You clean. Right. Yeah. Oh, actually, so yeah, so I wanted to move this one. Uh, let me turn on the gumball, maybe a little bit, uh, 0.3 millimeter. Like that. Okay. Okay. Then uh, I will rotate. Yeah, I will rotate it from here and uh, minus 15 degrees, like this. So that the stones okay. catch the light better. Exactly. Yeah, yes, right. Yes, uh, stone can catch the light better. All right, so it looks like that. And then the hero, and uh, we will do revolve command. Yeah, revolve, select the curve, center zero. What? Okay. Okay. So then, um, why don't we put the uh, the stone over here, spawn stone and prong on the hero? Okay. So again, the block. So I will import the block of the 1.5 millimeter uh, stone and cutter and prongs. Okay, it's right here. So you have a stone and then pavilion cutter and hole cutter. And, and uh, this is a prongs. So these are all, uh, you know, one block. Okay, so I will turn off this uh, gem layer. No, I'm. No, I will turn off the cutter layer. Got two cutters there, right? Yeah, you've got. Yeah, exactly. So it's a whole cutter. So advantage of this is, uh, I will show it you later. So when you um, array the uh, the stone, so where the uh, the support is, so you don't, you cannot use a hole. So if yeah. that's the case, you can use only. Uh, so you've got it, you can choose whether yeah. you just want to make a, a cutout for the stone seat or whether you actually want to bang a hole straight through to, through the actual uh, surface at the bottom. And sometimes you just don't have the option. So this exactly. gives you both options here. Yeah, this is, this is a good idea. Yeah, so that's, I work that way, yeah. And also the block is you can create, some people do this whole block, one block, and then there is another block of the only the pavilion uh, cutter. And then like I told you before, uh, you can replace it. So you can click to replace it uh, that way. But uh, to make it easier for me, like I, I made the two separately so that uh, instead of the input the other uh, block file, you can just uh, choose uh, one of uh, the other. So if you wanted to use a whole cutter in a pavilion, what you need to do is you can boolean union together and use as a one cutter. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So turn off this and uh, I will um, orient on surface. Uh, to here, but uh, in order to do that, I need a curve so that uh, I can put it right on this uh, quad point. So go to the uh, extract the iso curve command, okay. and I will select the, I will create this curve. So that's going to be the guide. And then Oriental surface and uh, select the both um, 
cutter, uh, both stone and the plow. Are you not going to select the cutter as well? You're just going to oh, put the stone. a cutter is come with it. Oh, yeah, God. Oh, it's it's coming. Coming. Yep. It's it's exactly. Exactly. Yep. So that is a beauty of the block. Yeah, it's like a, a group. Yeah. So base point zero. Okay, click that and uh, make sure it's rigid. I never get the surface orient to right the first time either. Don't worry. Yeah, exactly. Right here. All right. So then I don't need this curve anymore, and then I will um, pour array. Yeah. Pour array, those two, and center zero, and I would do 18. What's well, nice about the polo array tool is that if you realize or if you see in the in the process of putting the, the stones or the doing the array that it's maybe not enough stones or too many, you can still go back during exactly. the change. Yeah, you you can, yeah, exactly. But yeah, you can change it. Okay, if that's going to be 17 or 18, you can change the number. This, this is a nice, I like that. I like that you can do that with the polo array tool. Exactly. So here you see that the little crooked, you know, it's not that straightened. So this is, uh, I you can, uh, so because this is a history, yeah, I always work with the record history. Uh -huh. So you can straighten it. And then uh, I feel like this stone is gonna be, should be a little bit toward the center. Yeah. So I will uh, ungroup. So these, these two are grouped. And then I would drag it to toward the center, but look at the uh, gumball. So that's not the uh, that's not the uh, correct orientation. So you can click the property of the gumball. You can align to the object. So now see it's a uh, straightened. Then you will grab the uh, arrow, and then let's say something like that. See, everybody followed. Nice. After. Don't you love Rhino history? Yeah. Uh, the McNeil guys can be very proud of their program. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. Okay. So, uh, what the next? So, next it's a shank. So, I will hide this temporarily. All right. So let's work on a shank. So I will turn off the plumb layer and gem layer and a hair ring layer. Oops. I have to go to the ring layer and turn off the hero. Uh, maybe I can, we can just leave that diamond for now. And it's good for reference, right? Sorry? Good for reference, especially when you're working on the shank and the, and the side view of the shank. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's good reference to have a diamond. All right, so I go to the right viewport and I create the cross sections in order to uh, create a shanks, uh, to create, create a shank. So I will create a, a direct angle three by one, like this three millimeter and one millimeter. And then uh, ellipse diameter command. And I will create the ellipse like this. You're gonna use the Boolean, the Boolean curve tool again. Exactly, that's right. So I will, so I will uh, have my this favorite. So this is a two bar, my pop-up. Yeah, so I can get it very easily. And I select it and click water. Very mm -hmm. easy. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Okay, so I need a two more of those. So this is a three millimeter. So I need one more. So I will change the orientation of the gumball to the word. Okay, so I need actually, um, yeah, I make a copy of this. So 
I will make it 2.2 millimeter. Yeah, I make a 2.2 millimeters. I will do scale 3D, or you can scale do scale 2D, 3D, doesn't matter because this is a 2D. So center base point, first reference point, and second reference point is 2.2 millimeters. Okay, then uh, we can use this one one more. So you just clicking on the Alt button while you you yeah, pull. exactly. This is so easy. So drag it and then uh, click the tap the Alt key to make a quick copy. So especially you know like a, when you uh, work with a grasshopper to get the um, the number slider, you know. You, to get the follow the uh, follow the uh, number slider to make a duplicate, it's pretty convenient. Yeah, so yep. tap the alt key. So this one, I will make it to one point one point eight millimeter wide, scale three D. Okay. Here we go. Oops. A little family. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, like a family of three. All right. So now I will uh, place this one. Yeah. So I will introduce this command on a transform tool. It's called uh, Orient Perpendicular to Curve. Yeah. Okay. This is one I don't use very often either. It's so good to see somebody else do something. To, to to see how you approach the the modeling process it's i always love seeing the the way other people use rhino yeah uh, me too so i'm always telling people so see rhino is not the only one way so there are so many different ways so i always have a pleasure to seeing somebody or telling me uh you know that's uh, how they model or how they you know uh or they tell me the tricks or kind of shortcut of the, what they do. So even now, like I, I'm learning every day, I found something new, new tricks. Yeah, mm. ways to model. So this one, obviously you can uh, copy or you can mo move this cross section to the desired point. Yeah, but uh, this is quite interesting command, uh, orient. Uh, orient perpendicular to curve. So how it works is select the object to orient. So I'm in the right viewport. I will select this one, the large one. Press enter. Base point. So base point is right here in the midpoint. Mm -hmm. Then select the curve to orient is this curve. Then, uh, okay, so you can click the rotate option. Do yes, then look at the, my right viewport. So mm. I click this quad point. Yeah. Then I will rotate it like. Oh, yeah. super. Yeah, it's so easy. Okay, so I will do that other one too. So this one, this is a base point. Then click this, um, the curve. Now I go to the top viewport and looking for the quad point. Oh, I still have to click this rotate option. Then quad. Then rotate it like this. Then I need. Okay, then I need this to the other side. So I have a shortcut called, uh, it's called MH mirror horizontal. Yeah. Yeah, the one shot. So you, you can make a mirror to the other side of the axis. So now you have it uh, to the both side. Sorry? That's a shortcut you created yourself in Rhino. Exactly. Yeah, mirror to uh mirror to the other side of the y axis is a MH mirror horizontal. I do MV too, like a mirror vertical. It's yeah. um, it create the mirror image, the other side of x axis. So this 
So this one is easy. So I can just, uh, you know, you can use the same command or you can just move it from here to the top of the shank. Here we go. Okay. So this Zumba is keep coming on. Yeah, I see it. It's, they're taking turns. The okay. two little boxes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, so, okay. So this is how it looks like. So let's start uh, creating shanks. Um, make a surface. So I change the layer to the middle one. And then use a sweep one rail. This is a rail, and this is the cross section curves. Mm -hmm. I mean, sweep shapes. Enter. And change the scene. You can also change this curve scene mm -hmm. uh, before you orient this so that you don't have to do this while you are uh, using a sweep one rail. You know, I've had. People ask me before, why do I always insist on putting the curve on the inside of the, the curve rail? And uh, I actually had to ask myself that question because it was more out of habit that we were doing it. But I realized there's really a good reason why to why you should put the seam on the inside is because if you do any bullions on the outside of the, of the shank or on the outside of the curve, uh, it becomes trickier to 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 do if there's the seam on the outside right or yeah yeah sure yeah yes uh the yeah, seam uh created a lot of trouble so you have to avoid it so it's better to be inside of it yeah exactly yeah so enter so this is the first one and the second one maybe i will use a different layer and sweep one rail, and I will select this one, two, and three. Again, it's a little bit annoying to change the scene, but this is super important. But is there a reason why you did the top and the bottom separately? Oh yes, um, because we're going to create an arm here. So uh, yeah, so I think it's gonna be easier. I mean, you can maybe do one at the same time, but uh, um, yeah, we will create this arm the next. So I think it's will be uh, easier to to do this way. Okay. Yeah, that's a good explanation. Okay, so here we go. So now uh, the third one, that looks good. Okay, yeah. so third one is go to the front viewport and then I would turn off this layer, which is the middle because I wanted to make a curve. Okay. And then actually we need a, a hero curve, not the middle part of it. Okay, so we need to have an arm like this, which is starting from uh, right here, the bottom of the mirror, and branding in to right here. So you can also, you know, draw the curve using a control point curve command, but uh, um, I use a brand curve command, brand curve, which is a curve tool, brand but curve. Yeah, I love the blend curve command. Yes, it's a beautiful, uh, beautifully, uh, you know, it will create a beautifully branded curve without, you know, doing kind of manually. So it's, it's the curve. Same curve. with the blend curve command. Yeah. So before we do that, uh, we have to, before we do that, we have to create a guide. So I'll create a single line. Mm -hmm. It's starting from maybe here, like that. 
and then over here. Oops. You want that to be on the curve now? Yeah, over here. Okay. This one. And shift. Yeah, quad point. And over here. Then we go back to the uh, brain curve. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hold one second. Okay. Just... okay, so actually I want to move this one a little bit. I want to move this a little bit up like this. Yeah, here we go. I think this would be better. Yeah, so you start uh, right here. So uh, brand curve, select the curve to brand. I will click uh, here, the end, uh, near the end. Yeah. And click right here, not the circle, but this straight line. Yeah. Here we go. Very nice. Yeah, it's very nice. So you can either do tangency or curvature, but I think this one, uh, I guess, tangent, uh, curv curvature will be uh, more graceful. Mm. But if you had to take that whole, for instance, the little curved line that you, not curve, but the little line that you drew, the starting line, for example, and you had to move that little starting line a uh, tenth of a millimeter to the right or the left. Oh, you mean... I mean, if you, you, you just move this one, no, it doesn't come with it. This is where the running history doesn't, doesn't, doesn't activate. No, because this is not uh, nothing to do with, I mean, this is here to just a guide. So this is not related to the command. Yeah, so once we created this uh, curve, we can delete this one because since, you know, it doesn't work that way so but uh, if you wanted to move it yeah you, you, you can move this one this Using point yeah control points rather okay uh, still it, it's uh keep this uh the beautiful uh, graceful curve okay all right so now you delete the, this guide curve Then what I do is go to the perspective view and turn off this uh, hero curve. And we create this uh, cross section for this arm, mm -hmm. which I will use um, the ellipse diameter command. No, uh, ellipse diameter command, yes. So start of first line, uh, start of the first axis, top of this arm, so we make a 1.5 by two millimeters. So I do 1.5. That looks a bit big, yeah. <laughs> 1.5, <laughs> right here. Hold on shift and two, like that. Oh, Eva, I think I made a mistake. Why? Uh, because see, I I didn't do I didn't do the project. It's here, right here. Ah, oh. uh, okay. Oh, but why don't you just take the transform project to C plane and and? Oh, uh, I can do that. So shall we talk about it? To, yeah. to just leave it like that. So no, no, go to your front view. <laughs> okay. All right. So now I realize that they have made a mistake here. See, I I should have created this. Uh, front viewport, this uh, the line, the guideline with a project on, but I didn't. So the end result is I was snapping the endpoint of this cross section. See, it, it has to be in a planar, but you don't have to redo it. If that happens, you have to project it. Yeah, so this is a good thing I made a mistake so that I can show you how to fix it. I like the mistakes because nothing, you always need to know how to go back and fix something without having to do everything from the beginning again. 
Exactly. So this is a good command, everyone. So no. So you look at my front viewport and let's say right viewport. See, this is this should be in a planner. So I use the command called project C plane command, which is a transform. I use this all the time. Project C plane. Project to C plane. So select object to project. I have to be in a front viewport. So I will select this uh, curve. Enter and then delete input object. So this is uh, asking me if you wanted to replace the new curve to the old curve, or if you wanted to have the two, you want to keep the both curve. So I would do yes and see what happens to my uh, right viewport when I click this yes. See, it's straightened. Magic. Yes, magic. So I love it. Thank you, Mapinio. <laughs> All right. So um, I guess, yeah, so this is good. So I will create a shank. So metal three. So uh, sweep one rail. Select the uh, sweep, sweep shape. Again. So all the seam has to be the same, uh, has to be aligned to the inside of the shank. Mm -hmm. Then, okay. Okay. So this way, so when I turn on the, um, the hero, yeah. So you see that, and uh, okay, so this is what I'm talking about, see? I feel like this is too much to go to the right. That mm. look like, yeah. So uh, if that's the case, you can move it. Yeah, can... it, it looks good, but... Uh, it, uh, right. I... So I will select this one and I will, I will uh, select this point mm. and uh, this curve, right? So this is the top point of the... Uh, this shank curve and that, and then I turn on the hero, change it to the uh, shaded, and then uh, okay, also you can move it down a little bit and you can bring it to the, see? Mm -hmm. The shank moves. So yeah, so this is good actually. Okay. Okay, then we can mirror this image to the other side. You can use a regular uh, you can use a regular mirror command. Okay, so we have this shank, so uh, we have to cap it later. But uh, let me uh, uh, the, let me complete the part. So we have to complete which is uh, this donut in the middle and this support. Okay, so I will go to the front viewport. Actually, let me um, turn off the metals. Okay, so, <clears throat> sorry. So we will back to the curve. All right, so we'll offset this curve to the 0 0.6 millimeter, which is about the half of the uh, the shank here. Oh, yeah. Okay, then um, we'll create this donut with the, for the support. Yeah. So yeah. I create the circle, maybe vertical option, and click right here, and diameter full. 4.5 millimeter. <clears throat> so this is the circle. Mm. Okay. So this donuts, we wanted to make it like a uh, shape along with this curve. So what we use is it's called a curve from two views, which is uh, another favorite tool of mine. It's another, it's another favorite of mine. It's a superb. <laughs> this is amazing, amazing tools. Um, yeah, so 
curve from two views and I click, click this circle and this uh, offset. Here we go. So we have this um, circle, which is bent like this, uh, the shape. So it create the top and bottom, so I will delete the bottom one. Then um, I will create this donut. Uh, maybe this layer is okay. So I would use a, a pipe command. Pipe command. And uh, diameter, I wanted to make a little bit thicker than the uh, this top shank because we have to put it on difference later. So let's say 1.2, maybe 3, Ooh. like this. Okay. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. Yeah. yeah so it's very important. See, this is uh, a little bit, um, you know, the wider, I mean, taller. Than this yeah. shank, so you can cut it out. Is that is that circle is that circle centered? Is that donut centered on the? Check on the on the side oh, view. Gosh. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. No, this part I want to redo it. Gosh. Why is that? Oh, because again, the project. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> Sorry, but no, no, don't worry. Do you know how often that kind of thing happens to me? <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. no, so, I do it all the time. So, okay, so delete those parts and then let me start from here. Okay, okay, so let's go to the third part. I would turn here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, here we go. And here is the shank. So you know, it's very important that this is gonna this donut is a little bit uh, taller than this shank, so that we can boolean difference it and then delete the inside of it. And the bottom two, hey? Right? Yep, bottom two. Yes. Okay, so um, let's start working on the different parts. So go to the front viewport and. Let's see. Okay, so I would change it to the wireframe. And change the layer to the prong layer. Uh, you're gonna make okay. it close. Yeah, uh, I will make the plong to support the uh, center stone and this support. Yes. So uh, what I will do is I will create this curve using uh, arc command, arc start and point on arc command. I mean, you can, like again, you can do straight curve, straight line, or you can draw a curve. Uh, with the control point curve, but I will use this one. Arc start and point on arc command. My favorite as well. You've got good control over the arc that way. Yeah, exactly. So this is this one. Yeah. So again, I will show you. So this is a great thing about record history. So you can uh, aim it like this. See, start and point on arc. A little bit of the curve like this. Okay, then go to the top viewport. No, go to the perspective view. And then um, you, I will rotate this one to 45 degrees. But you have to rotate. Um, copy option is yes. Yeah, I will tell you why. So center of the rotation, zero. 
copy yes then angle minus 45 enter okay so this is the rotated curve and then now i will create the um the pipe so again solid tools pipe, pipe command pipe flat cap mm -hmm. and uh start of diameter maybe 1.1 millimeter mm -hmm. enter enter okay here we go okay so you have to inspect your work mm -hmm. well actually it looks good yeah but uh, i will tell you why uh you know how you can edit so you go to the full views and you look at this and then let's say so this is a uh in a front pupil this is a rotated curve but this is the uh the curve i drew on a front pupil so if you don't like this one, for example, you wanted to move this away from the uh, the center. So instead of manipulating this curve, which is very difficult because this is uh, you know forty five degrees, so you will use this projected curves. Original one, yeah. Yeah, and then let's say I will move it to the right and see what happens. See, it's. Nice. Yeah, it is, uh, uh, you can, uh, this one is updating. So this is a great thing about record history. So I will maybe leave it like this. Maybe, maybe bring a little bit to the right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm happy with this. So MH mirror mirror horizontal. Oops, what happened? MH mirror horizontal, and then select to those two, and then mirror to the other side of the x-axis. MV. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's that. Okay, the next is the uh, the prong which holds the uh, center stone. So go to the front viewport. And then I will create a line, straight line. Let's say something like this. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Yes, yeah, something like this, a little longer. So that well, it uh, when you render this is maybe too long, but the, with a manufacturing purpose, yeah, you need a, to have a a little longer so that the jeweler can bend. Yeah. yeah. With more material. Or, yeah, more material. Yeah, it's better. So this is the same thing. Yeah, you will rotate this. But a copy rotate. Yeah, so co copy. Yes, center zero, uh, minus 45. Okay. Uh, but actually, you know, I realize this is not actually uh, exactly 45 degrees though. Well, anyway, uh, let's do that. Um, okay, so make uh, this one is pipe round cap, uh, maybe one millimeter. Okay, so when you look at this here, um, and then I turn on the all the gems and songs yeah okay so see this one is gonna be uh co so this will depress this one so actually that's uh, i have to rotate this again so what i would do is um this plong 
this plong, I would uh, ungroup it. I will ungroup because those are grouped and delete those uh, 45 degrees of uh, places. Okay. Then actually, um, yeah, so I will rotate this one. So like this, well, this case, copy no. You do that by eye. Yeah, so that should be. Yeah, something like this. And then, um, let's see if this still works. I don't know, recording history is broken. I wanted to move it a little bit toward the center. Oh, the history is broken. So, yeah, maybe I will slide this over a little bit toward, a little bit toward the uh, center. Yeah, it's about thirty percent of it should be lying within the stone stone's girdle, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, so now it's about this is good. Mirror horizontal. Mirror horizontal. And the okay. Looking okay. good. Yeah, looking good. So what else? So this is all the parts are done now. So what we will do is finish finishing up. Yes. So um, these shanks, this is um, this is a harrow, so we have to cap it. So I will cap. Uh, I can turn off the warning sign. I don't know. So, okay. So I would cap those top and bottom and also the arm. Yeah, so this one. Cap it. Great. So now with Boolean difference, uh, this one, Boolean difference. Select the object to select surf poly surface to subtract from is the ring. Subtract width is this donut. Oh, what happened? Okay. Oh, subtract from and with. Don't delete input. Oh, the read input. Okay, sorry. No, I did it. I changed the read input to yesterday, so that's why. Sorry. Okay, so uh, Boolean difference. Select poly surface to subtract from is a shank. Enter. Subtract with is a donut, but delete input has to be no. And donut. donuts. Enter. There you okay. Go. Here we go, and then, oh, didn't, it's, oh, um, you know what? Manifold. Yeah, I, uh, why is that? Maybe it has to be a little bit. A bit bigger, right? Yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, maybe even just scale it up in the, in the one axis, but, but by a touch, eh? Huh? Yeah, exactly. So, yes. So I will scale this one. Let me just do it again. Sometimes it's a matter of fractions of millimeters. You either have to move the object a little bit or scale it a little bit just so that the bullion works well. 
So, yes, exactly. So I sometimes, um, yeah, so when a, when a Boolean difference doesn't work, you scale even like a 1%, scale 3D 1% bigger or uh, smaller. Yeah, so um, the Boolean difference is going to work. Mm -hmm. So now you see this one. I look at this and... Uh, um, well, you can uh, go back to the uh, plum, or you can bury on difference with this one, I guess. Yeah, you know what? You've got two options there. I'm lazy. You know what I would do? I would fill it those end caps. <laughs> I would okay. fill it those end caps so that they, they become <laughs> rounded and that they stay inside the, the donuts. Or uh, uh, if there's enough... Uh, metal let me try so i would do feel it yeah a big radius such as 0.4 maybe oh yeah it went it went inside okay. I'm, I'm i'm always i'm always looking for the easiest way out it's exactly which, which is very important exactly so <laughs> not always advisable <laughs> See, didn't think of it. So this is something. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, I learn, I learned the new things from other models. Yes, exactly. So you don't have to redo it. You can fill it. You can fill it this way. And uh, yeah. So let me just do those two. Thank you, Eva. <laughs> I'm teaching you my bad habits. <laughs> All right. I hope I didn't fill it too much though. Oh yeah, it looks fine. All right, so uh, so that's that. So next step is the uh, the top uh, the stones and prongs on on the hero. So I have a list layer. I will turn on the cutter layer. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So this is what we're talking about. Yes. Yeah? So this is. Uh, see, you see, this is uh, uh, coming into the shank, so we don't really need the hole cutter. Uh, mm. We only need a uh, pavilion cutter. Mm. So what we would do is, uh, this is all block. So when I select this, this is a three block instance, yes? Mm. So in order to do Boolean union or difference, you have to explode this uh, block mm -hmm. to uh, bring it back to the poly surface because otherwise, without uh, having a poly surface, Boolean union difference doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So, which is again the block instance to the flyout over here is called explode block instance to low level. Yeah, so uh, let me do that. So click the command and select the block to explode uh, is the uh, cutters. So I will go to the cutter layer and uh, select the uh, 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 sub-layer mm -hmm. object. Oops, what happened? Uh, right click. Wait a second. Right click and uh, select Sublayer object. So now it's a it's been exploded. So now when I click this uh each in the block, it's no longer block, it's a poly. Mm -hmm. So now you can select the uh the pole cutter. So I will delete those um which are in the uh, shank or this support. Yeah, the one, one, no, 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 you're forgetting one, one, one. Oh, right here. Thank you. There you oh. go. Okay, so now um, I can definitely turn off the uh, gems and then uh, Burion Union, those, um, the cutters. Okay, Burion Union command. Oh. 
Okay, so let's boolean union dot cutter. So boolean union command, and then I will union uh, the pavilion cutter and a whole cutter. Then enter. Here we go. Then boolean un uh, boolean difference from the hero to the cutter, uh, with the cutter, select the object, enter, and I turn off the cutter layer, here we go. Voila. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so next is the plong, plong. Okay, so this plong is the manufacturing plong, this is, you know, much longer than we want it to be, uh, be with the, the rendering. So we will render, uh, I mean, uh, that Eva will end render after my model is done. So I wanted to replace this plong to the shoulder one using a block. Okay, again, the block to the flyout. It's called replace block. So select the instance so we can uh, swap the, uh, the plonk. So let me um, import it. Go to the file import. I have this one millimeter plonk. Got a bigger fillet. Yeah, so this doesn't have to be you know, uh, actually, um, well, anyway, never mind, sorry. Please delete that. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so, as you see, this is a shorter, this is much shorter. Yes, so this is a, uh, so this is a, a surface. So we will erase it. Yeah, so this is so cool. So replace the block, select the instance, uh, block the instance to change for for change. Mm -hmm. I will select the uh, plong, mm -hmm. select the object, oops, again, right click and uh, select the object. Okay, then press enter. Then uh, additional hidden instance. I don't have anything, so I will click for now. Uh, and enter for now, and then select the instance definition to uh, to swap to is this one. Yes, yeah? so uh, I will click this one, and then this plong, these plongs on the green will be re replaced to this uh, purple one. Yes, so click. Look. Yes, is that magical? Well, is this before? Oops. <laughs> and afterwards. <laughs> what did the before after? Ah. Super. Right. Okay, so here you go. So this is the nice size for the rendering. Voila. Okay, so I will hide this object. So we can do Boolean instead of Boolean unioning, but uh, uh, what do you think, Eva? So you wanted to render, so I will make this one a little shorter, or you want okay. to Okay. All right, so now everything is pretty much done. So what we need to do is Boolean union, solid tools. Let's see, we can union this together. Yes. Great. And then those donuts and all the parts and hero. Wonderful. And then prongs. Union, union, the hero and prongs. Don't even have to leave the prongs separately. I can literally just lower the prongs myself manually mm -hmm. for the rendering. I'll just lower the prongs using the sub 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 division surface tool. 
in order to build your union this far, uh, I realize this is still a broke instance. So we need to explode it. Uh, so I can maybe uh, window select it and uh, explode block instance for a low, to a lower level. Okay, so here is a poly surface. Great. Mm -hmm. You can do Boolean Union, this one, and uh, all the prongs. Maybe I don't select this. Then enter. Oops, this one. There's one prong. There's one oh. broke. <laughs> this one still. Uh, <laughs> this one. One who got away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cannot get away from it. From it. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so here it is. So we have Yes, so we have the hero ring ready. Bravo. Very, very nice. Thank you. And this you would you would say this is an intermediate tutorial, right? I mean yes, this exactly. uh -huh. yeah, intermediate level. Yeah. And uh, you can apply this to any different size of center stone. Uh, you can make the halo as big as you want. You can do a double halo as well. Um, yeah, that would be beautiful, yes. But thank you, Akio. That was very nice. I learned uh, quite a couple new ways to use my tools there. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, like I said, I'm always learning Yeah, from other modelers. Yeah, the new things. That's makes me going, right? So, yeah, I'm looking forward to see your rendering of this arrow, yes. Yeah, we're gonna do a little fast forward on that uh, after, uh, yeah, after this.
So thank you so much, everyone watching my uh, hero ring. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Akio. I learned a couple of lots of new things today. That was a very nice Halo tutorial. And uh, thank you for everybody who is watching. Um, we hope you enjoyed that. And uh, remember to click like and, and carry on watching our videos. Yes, and uh, if you haven't done so, please subscribe our channel. We are trying to uh, upload as many uh, videos as possible. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. your support. Cheers. Okay, bye.